because as I understand it, central banks want real estate prices to remain high so creditors can collect on their interest payments instead of having to write down unpayable debts. So isn't that a central piece of why we're using monetary policy here? Yes, uh, that's exactly correct. Uh, but the banks aren't lending more to, uh, for mortgage credit. They're using it to uh, speculate. Uh, they're using it to lend to uh, third world countries. Uh, to do foreign currency arbitrage and to buy uh, bonds uh, of high-yielding uh, countries. And so we're having uh, a bubble in the uh, junk bond market, uh, not real estate. Now, can you explain how real estate works in terms of land rent and the example of taxes and interest payments for creditors? But can you explain it in layman terms? Because as I understand it, so-called real estate investors want to pay all of their rent as interest to creditors so as to minimize their own equity stake, maximizing gains from appreciation. Is that correct? That's pretty much right. Uh, uh, real estate is worth whatever a bank is going to lend against it. So essentially, uh, suppose you're an absentee owner. It's easiest to understand that way. Uh, uh, you look at how much rent a uh, property will yield, and uh, you say you go to a bank, and you, you try to bid against other people that are trying to borrow with a bank loan. And the winner uh, of the bank loan is whoever is going to pay the most rent to the bank is uh, debt service to carry the mortgage. So whoever will take out the largest mortgage gets to buy the property. Uh, and as banks loosen the credit terms, uh, lower the interest rates, and uh, uh, make easy, even easier credit, or simply lie, uh, the winners are the people who go into the debt the most, and that's what's led uh, the economy into uh, this uh, balance sheet depression that's... Uh, uh, this uh, de debt leverage. Now, how does this whole idea of leveraging up to gain from property price appreciation relate to the housing bubble? Well, suppose uh, it used to be that people had to put down, a homeowner would have to put down 30% of their income, and they could borrow 70%. And that limited uh, the price rise uh, according to, you know, how much could be paid. But now, uh, by 2007, 2008, People could buy uh, homes without putting any money down at all, and the banks didn't even uh, ask for amortization. You didn't have to pay off a mortgage in 30 years. So the entire rental value, either uh, the rental value or if you're a homeowner, uh, the, the rental value of a home to you, uh, you could uh, afford to pay all this money to the bank for debt service instead of having to pay down the loan. Uh, and the banks at the same time mounted a whole campaign to cut uh, real estate taxes. And if the taxes are left, uh, they said, we'll cut real estate taxes to leave to, uh, homeowners uh, in a better position. But every time they cut the real estate tax, that just meant that uh, people could pay, buyers uh, could uh, use this, uh, what's left, to borrow even more money from the banks uh, and go even further into debt. So nobody uh, really gained at all except for the banks. So what implications does this have for the residential property market? Uh, well, right now it means that not, uh, there are not many people getting new loans, and most of the residential properties in the last years have been bought not on with bank money, but for all cash by hedge funds uh, that have come in and uh, tried to buy up all of the distressed properties being sold. Uh, and right now uh, they've sort of run their course. Now the hedge funds are trying to sell out, uh, but individuals still aren't uh, able to get much uh, bank credit uh, for the property market. There's not all that much construction really taking place. So rents are going up, uh, and prices are, uh, there's a, there are warnings by Moody's and by other uh, investor services uh, that real estate prices are likely to go down because banks simply aren't lending. Now, you describe what's happening in these markets as a case of rentier oligarchs extracting rents from the middle classes. So is that the right description of how you've been describing this? Yes. Can you expand upon that a little bit for me, the idea of rentier? Yeah, it means uh, a rentier is somebody who lives off uh, either their rents or their, their income, uh, who, who is passive. And uh, a rentier, uh, the banks are really uh, in 
uh, the positions of landlords a uh, hundred years ago. The banks are get it used to be that the landlords would get all of the rent. Uh, but today, now that our property is all bought and sold freely, uh, if you're a Donald Trump or if you're a real estate investor, your motto is rent is for paying interest. Uh, and so uh, the banks end up with all of the rental value in the form of interest. And uh, landlords are saying, well, look, uh, we're willing to pay all the rent to the bankers uh, and give them all the income. What we want is the capital gain is the price of our property keep going up. But right now, the price of property isn't going up anymore. There's no capital gain, so there's no motivation for speculators to come in and borrow like there was up to 2008. And at that time, speculators were about one-sixth of the market. Well, today, they're, they're very little, uh, except the people buying for all cash. Uh, and so you're, it, the, the whole character of the market has changed. And that, leaves only the that was Dr. Michael Hudson, the president of the Institute for the Study of Long-Term Economic Trends.